coming now to the marginal cost of capital schedule and i will explain this concept through an example a company's capital target structure is 60 percent equity and 40 percent debt the cost and availability of raising various amounts of new debt and equity capital is shown below what this is telling us is the following if a company raises up to 4 million then the cost of debt is 14 percent if the company borrows more than 4 million then the cost of debt goes up to 16 percent in the equity market if the company raises up to 9 million the cost of equity is 20 percent if the company raises more than 9 million then the cost of equity is 22 percent this is a very simple example but it will illustrate the concept what i want you to do is calculate the weighted average cost of capital for raising 5 million and then raising 10 million 15 million 20 million assume that we have this capital structure and i'll just give you a hint to get you started when a company raises 5 million it is going to raise 60 percent from the equity market and 40 percent from the debt market so your debt market is 40 percent of five which is going to be 2 million equity is going to be 3 million which is 60 percent of five notice that the debt is less than this cut off so what is the cost going to be cost of debt is going to be 14 percent what about the cost of equity we are less than this cut off so the cost of equity is going to be 20 percent going back to our original vac formula we also need to use the weightages the weight of debt is 40 percent so you have 14 percent multiplied by 0 0.4 and then you have 20 percent multiplied by 0 0.6 we are not doing a 1 minus t because we are given the after tax cost of debt use this to come up with the weighted average cost of capital for this amount then use the same method to come up with the numbers for raising 10 million 15 million and 20 million and then i want you to fill out this picture you are going to have 5 million 10 million 15 and 20 and you need to show the vac for each of these numbers when you raise 5 million the cost of debt based on the calculations we saw on the previous slide equal 17.6 percent when the company raises 10 million then debt is 4 equity is 6 notice that 4 is right at the edge so the cost of debt is still 4 percent equity is 6 we are still less than this threshold so the cost of capital overall weighted average cost of capital is still 17.6 percent but if the company raises just a little more than 10 then notice that we will be borrowing more than 4 million so we are now in this category the cost of debt is now going to be 16 percent equity is still less than 9 million so the cost of equity is still going to be 20 percent the new cost of capital is 0 0.4 into 16 plus 0 0.6 into 20, which is 18.4. What is happening at the 10 million mark is that as we raise a little more than 10 million, our cost of capital jumps up to 18.4. If the company raises 15 million, then debt would be 6, equity 9. At 6, we have a cost of debt equal to 16%. At 9, we are just at the edge and cost of equity is 20%.
So at 15, the cost of capital will still be 18.4. But as we raise a little more than 15, then the cost of debt remains the same because here we are already in the higher tier. But equity now will be in this category. We will be raising more than 9 million. The cost of equity then becomes 22%. And the overall cost of capital jumps up to 19.6%. So as we go beyond 15 million, the cost of capital becomes 9.6. After that, the cost of capital stays 19.6 because we are in the higher category with both debt and equity. What we have created here is the marginal cost of capital schedule which is showing us the weighted average cost of capital for different amounts of capital. Let us now summarize the main points and these are quite testable but first let us just reproduce the marginal cost of capital schedule. Here is what we came up with on the previous slide. Notice that as a firm raises more capital, the cost of different sources of finance will increase. And this makes sense. As a company tries to borrow more and more, riskiness goes up, so the cost of debt will go up. Similarly, as a company tries to raise more and more equity, the cost of equity goes up. That's why we have, that's why we have a marginal cost of capital schedule that is going upwards. In a earlier slide we talked about a uh, marginal cost of capital which was a straight line but realistically a step function is what you are more likely to see as we've discussed the marginal cost of capital schedule shows the weighted average cost of capital for different amounts of capital or different amounts of financing and finally, extremely important from an exam perspective is this concept of a breakpoint. The breakpoint is where the cost of capital changes. In our example, the two breakpoints are 10 and 15. What is a quick way of coming up with the breakpoints? The answer is right here. A breakpoint is equal to the following amount of capital at which the component cost of capital changes divided by the weight of the component in the capital structure. In our example, we have two components, debt and equity. Let's take the debt component first. What's the amount of capital at which the cost of debt changes? Answer is 4. At 4 million, the cost of debt goes up from 14% to 16%. That's the numerator divided by the weight of the component in the capital structure. What's the weight of debt in the capital structure? It is 40% or 0 0.4. 4 divided by 0 0.4 is equal to 10. This 10 is where the cost of capital jumps up. So, in the example earlier, I simply gave you the numbers, but if on an exam you are asked to calculate the breakpoints, then here is what you need to do. What about the second breakpoint? This increase is coming because of equity. So you look at the amount of equity at which the change occurs, and that is 9 million. You do 9 million divided by the weight of equity in the capital structure, which is 0 0.6. 9 divided by 0 0.6 is 15. And that's the number right here where the second breakpoint occurs. Again, this is quite important from an exam perspective, so make sure you understand this concept. Next, I will help you understand example 13. Over the years, students keep coming to me and asking me about this example. I will make you do it, but I will give you some basic information which will help you solve this problem. We are asked to calculate the weighted average cost of capital at different levels of debt. Different levels of debt would imply different capital structures. To compute the VAC, 
you need the cost of debt and the cost of equity. You calculate the cost of debt using borrowing rates in table 4. And in table 4, you are given the spreads over LIBOR for different levels of debt relative to capital. Capital is equal to debt plus equity. LIBOR is an interbank offer rate, and in this particular case, that LIBOR is simply given as 4.5%. As the company takes on more debt, the spread over LIBOR goes up. And the, the cost of debt essentially is equal to LIBOR plus the spread. In our example, LIBOR is staying the same, but as the debt increases, this spread goes up. Therefore, the cost of debt goes up, which makes sense. More debt means more risk. More risk means that the cost of debt should be higher. The cost of debt part is fairly easy. The tougher part is calculating the cost of equity. And to do this, we have to compute the beta at different levels of debt. Now, how do we do this overall? The most basic way of coming up with cost of equity is to use the capital asset pricing model, which says that the cost of equity is equal to the risk-free rate plus beta times the equity risk premium. We are given the risk-free rate. We are given the equity risk premium. So we need to calculate the beta at different levels of debt. And as the level of debt goes up, we can expect the riskiness of the beta. We can expect the riskiness or the beta to also go up. So how do we calculate the beta at different levels of debt? We are given the unlevered or the asset beta, and that number is 0 0.9. We are given the tax rate, which is 36 percent. Now, at different levels of debt, we have to calculate the equity beta. And this formula should look familiar from the discussion we had on the pure play model. Given a asset beta and the tax rate and the debt to equity ratio, you should be able to come up with the equity beta. But there is one little twist. The information provided tells us that the debt to capital ratio is 0.1 and then there are other debt to capital ratios. But if you can understand this, then you will be able to solve the rest of the problem. If you are given that the debt to capital ratio and remember capital is the combination of debt and equity. If you are given this number and you are told this is 0.1, then what is debt to equity? This is actually simple mathematics. The way you can do this is as follows. Just pick some numbers for debt and equity that will give you a ratio of 0.1. If we say debt is 1 and equity is 9, then debt to capital will be 0.1. With debt 1 and equity 9, what's debt to equity? It is 1 over 9, which is equal to 0 0.11 so in your formula you are going to use 0 0.11 for this situation you can then come up with the equity beta plug the equity beta into capm and calculate the cost of equity then you will have another situation where debt is higher and use the same method to come up with the cost of equity Hopefully now, when you do example 13, it will make a lot more sense. Final concept, flotation costs. Flotation costs are the fees charged by investment bankers when a company raises external capital. Many finance textbooks incorporate flotation costs directly into the cost of capital. In other words, what some textbooks say is the following. If we know that the flotation cost is equal to 3% and the cost of equity is equal to 15%, then we simply say 3% plus 15% is equal to 18%. But this approach is not 100% accurate from a theoretical perspective. What the CFA Institute recommends is to use this method. 
where we increase the project's initial outflow based on the flotation cost attributed to the project. Let's understand what this means. We go back to the dividend discount model or the Gordon growth model where we said that the cost of equity is equal to the dividend over P0 plus G. If we have a situation where the dividend is equal to 5 and let's say that P0 is equal to 100 and growth rate is equal to 2% then what is the cost of equity? Cost of equity would be 5 over 100, which is 5% plus 2%. This would be 0.07 or 7%. But when a company issues new shares, let's say that the company needs to pay a flotation cost of $1. Then what does that mean? The way we change the formula is as follows. We say that the cost of equity is D1 over P0 minus F. F is the flotation cost. We raise $100 by issuing a share or the company raises $100 by issuing a share and then the company needs to pay the flotation cost to the investment bank. So effectively or net net, the company is actually getting 99. That's why instead of using P0, we use P0 minus F and then the growth rate stays the same. To complete the calculation then, we assume the same dividend. Let's say the dividend is 5. Instead of dividing by 100, we will now divide by the net amount raised, which is 100 minus 1, that's 99. And then we will add the growth rate, which is 2%. This will give us the following answer. 7.05 percent so when we consider flotation cost the cost of equity is clearly going to go up and again to summarize the main point here is that we are subtracting the flotation cost from the issue price since the flotation cost is paid up front it is theoretically appropriate to simply subtract the flotation cost from the proceeds of the stock issue. That brings us to the end of this reading. Let's summarize the main points. You need to understand the concept behind WAC. Weighted average cost of capital represents the cost of raising money. And since we are raising money from different sources, we need to take the weighted average of the cost associated with each source. You must know the calculation, which is cost of debt into 1 minus T times the weight of debt and the weightage needs to be based on market values plus cost of equity cost of equity multiplied by the weight of equity if you have preferred shares then you also need to add the weight of preferred shares into the cost of preferred shares we then talked about different ways of calculating the component costs with Cost of debt, we talked about the YTM approach and we have to use the financial calculator. With cost of preferred shares, the main point was that cost of preferred shares is equal to the preferred dividend divided by the current price of the preferred share. With cost of equity, we talked about three methods. You must know them very well. CAPM, and then we had the dividend discount model where we assumed perpetual growth and then we talked about the bond yield plus a premium then we talked about these miscellaneous topics the pure play method the country risk premium the marginal cost of capital schedule and the flotation costs from an exam perspective i would say that these items are the most important as always i would encourage you to read the summary review the learning objectives. I have told you to do the examples. I think the examples in this reading are very good and they help you understand the concepts very well. Do the practice problems at the end of the reading and try to do practice problems from other sources as well.